Hello and welcome to the 17th round of the 2016 PCC Cup Series season at the Karyala Raceway in Finnish Karelia. On the pole is Israel Bruce in the 15 car, replacing Barney Ward for this week. We'll get back to that later. Gaspar D'Souza and Louis Ballard in row number two. Clay Gibson and Alina Lazareva in row number three. Gibson raced in the PCC Lights race, which had its first ever standing start, with Clara Kendall taking the pole for that. Uh, followed by the Alteris Gessler GP cars of Jan Schmidt and Christopher Loxen in there. They'd get down into turn number one, two, and three wide, but they'd sort it all out for the most part. However, we did have an incident in the back of the field where looks like Keegan Mallory, uh, Ruby Kosica, and Alexei Motov went around. Day wouldn't end there for Keegan Mallory. He'd get together with Alexa Lake, and they'd go hard into the barriers there. Uh, both drivers would be okay, but the scariest incident would occur with Leonid Chernov and Stanislav Varshavsky, as that is an absolutely massive incident. We have no word on either driver's medical condition. However, uh, Chernov's teammate Kowalczyk, Isaac Kowalczyk, would take the win at Karyala, and uh, that would do him a lot of good in the points, as he's trying to make up ground on Jan Schmidt and uh, Clara Kindle there as Ryan Matthews and Barry Juveno in row 18 as we get towards the back of the grid. A lot of these drivers had a lot of problems in qualifying. It was about five seconds from the fastest time set by Israel Bruce and the slowest time set by Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer in last place. And with that, the field gets set for its first ever standing start. And there's the green flag as Israel Bruce leads the field down to the line. Nicholas Cordovas gets an awful start. There goes Gaspar D'Souza. Clay Gibson's going to get alongside of him and maybe make that pass into turn number one as Israel Bruce on debut. Looking for a strong performance here today. Field going two and three wide in the back, but doesn't look like there's going to be any incidents. Uh, very unusual for this track to see that. As the field starts to sort itself out near the front, Israel Bruce still hanging on to the lead. As uh, the field by the backstretch has sorted itself out pretty well, but... Israel Bruce, the fourth driver for Team Ben Atkins, he drove the 1555 car uh, in the Russia round of Russia qualifiers, qualified that car for James Hewitt, and uh, it's been apparent that team owner Ben Atkins has not been happy with Barney Ward's performances, and his round of Germany performance was the final straw. He has been released from Team Ben Atkins, and Israel Bruce will be in this car for the time being, as far as we're aware. As we had an incident near the back of the field, Daniel Sharp got together with uh, Dust with uh, Duncan Cobb there. He goes around and he's going to get hit by Jerry Mott and he's going to go over right after the uh, Dwyer S there. And that's going to be the end of the day for Daniel Sharp. He would be okay. Israel Bruce still pulling out on that lead. He just ran the fastest lap of the field. And uh, looking back in the pack, here's uh, Ike Durbin who's running up in the top 10. He's in ninth place. He's the championship leader. He had a rough round of Germany. He went out early on after uh, colliding with Kuga Hakai, and uh, he's having a pretty good run up in the top 10. Now, James Hewitt, his nearest points rival, is just one position in front of him. He's trying to get around Louis Ballard there in eighth place, and ooh, cars are not handling too well in the back of the field, but James Hewitt is, at this moment, gaining on Ike Durbin in the championship. Hewitt looking for a strong performance here today, and... Uh, He's been really performing well up in the points. This has been a miracle run for James Hewitt. Now, last week's winner, Cale Bernfart Jr., is not having such a great run. He's back in 32nd place doing battle with Kurt Pliskin. And uh, he has returned to the mediocrity that he's been known for uh, outside of the super speedway. So unfortunate for Cale Bernfart Jr. We were hoping that maybe that win would have got, given him a bit more confidence. But here's Tom Delgado running up in the top uh top 15 he's in 13th place he's third in points right now and uh he's having a pretty strong run looking to gain on ike durbin but i don't think he's going to be able to do uh too much running where he is right now as israel bruce is starting to put a bit of a gap on gaspar d'souza uh, the swede has taken over this car as i mentioned before from barney ward uh, don't think we're going to see ward anytime uh, this season. He might get a ride in that Team Ben Atkins fourth car for Cleveland, but I think uh, Ben Atkins is pretty much done with Barney Ward. Uh, considering coming into this race, he was 31st in points while the other two were battling for the top five. As Jerry Myatt brings his car into the pits uh, to repair some damage from running into his teammate Daniel Sharp on lap one, 
And Gaspar D'Souza is going to come in on lap four from second place. Trying to roll the dice on this alternate strategy. I think this might work. Uh, cars had been stretching uh, their fuel about uh, 20 laps, and this is a 51 lap race, so it might end up working out. He might be able to stretch at 21 or 22 laps, but I don't, I'm not too sure on this one. As Clay Gibson is up in second place, he is having a fantastic season uh, when he's been in the car. He showed up at Nelson Ledges in the 28 truck uh, for AJ Murphy, got a win there. And uh, that kind of opened team's eyes up to this guy. He's taken over this 52 car because uh, Lenny Jacobs got injured at 8 Bull. Hope he's feeling better soon. But Clay Gibson trying to audition for a ride next season, it would seem. He's uh, turned a couple heads in the garage and might end up getting a ride here soon. As Here's Louis Ballard. He is the fastest car on track. He just caught up to uh, Alina Lazareva there. He's running in fifth place. Louis Ballard has not had quite the season he was hoping for. He is up in the top 10 in points, but he has been the worst performing Manticore of the season by far, even with a win. Uh, he is below both Ike Durbin and Tom Delgado in points. As uh, Looking here, he's going to make a move on the inside of Alina Lazareva, who has not really uh, had as much... He, she's been fast, but... Not as fast as Ballard. Uh, Ballard is the fastest car on track, and he's going to make a move on the inside there with ease. Look at uh, just how fast those Saturns are in a straight line as he just blew by Elena Lazareva there. Great run for Louis Ballard so far, and he's been picking off cars one by one as Jerry Mide is going to be the first car to go one lap down on uh, lap number eight of 51, and uh, he doesn't give... Israel Bruce too much of a problem there as that car is way off the pace he's about eight seconds off the pace with that damage uh, but he seems to be fairly courteous as a back marker so it shouldn't be too hard for drivers to get by him as Gaspar D'Souza now is caught up to the back of the field he goes by John Jefferson there and uh, Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer who are running about five seconds off the pace of the leaders and uh, not too surprised that he caught them this fast. He didn't lose that much time in his pit stop. Franz Bergman is back in the 35 this week after his round of Germany performance was good enough to get him signed for the rest of the European Tour. So congratulations to him. He was up in the top 10 in that race before he blew up. And he's uh, running 14th here today, so he's trying to replicate that run. Kelly Blackwater is going to take this car over when we get back to the States. She should be well enough to drive. Uh, but Franz Bergman is going to do what he can while he's still got this car and try and turn some heads here today. As uh, Louis Ballard is up to third place, and you can see there that uh, he got around Cordovos, and he's set his sights now on Clay Gibson, so he should be catching him pretty soon here as he's still the fastest car on track by quite some margin. As Barry Juvenal running in 36th place is the best of the Steffens Racing cars. This is an awful performance for Steffens Racing, and... Uh, this has been an awful European tour in general for them, and I think they want to get back to the States as soon as possible, as Israel Bruce has opened up a seven-second lead over Clay Gibson, who uh, has not really been keeping pace as much as he was earlier in the runs, uh, but Israel Bruce really, really putting the field on, uh, really shocking the field here today. Uh, did not expect this on debut as Gaspar D'Souza swings wide. He got pushed wide by Kyuga Hakai there in the 77, whose car seems to not be handling as well as he was hoping. As uh, Gaspar D'Souza has been held up by some of these back markers quite a bit. As, uh, as they go too wide in front of him, he can't really make a move. He's boxed in, and uh, that's going to cost him quite a bit of time if, you, if this alternate strategy is going to work. As took him only a lap but here's Louis Ballard getting ready to pass Clay Gibson and he's gonna make this look easy look at on the low line how much faster he is and there he goes right on around his fastest car on track is now up to second place setting his sights on Israel Bruce and he should be able to close that gap at least a little bit before the first round of pit stops we're only about six laps away from that right now as Joe Craig going alongside with Gaspar D'Souza for 30th place oh there he goes into the wall that's going to be a lazy spin from Joe Craig, who's going to back it into the barriers after the Dwyer S. 
and he is not going to replicate his round of Germany performance here today where he finished in, in the top three. Uh, Joe Craig, I think, just wants to get back to the States as soon as possible. He's never really been known as a road course driver. Same thing with John Jefferson and Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer, who are about to go a lap down here on lap 15. So, lap 15, and we've already got lap traffic. These cars are about five seconds off the pace, so not really surprising, but uh, these cars are going to be a bit of a nuisance to get around for the leaders, as uh, looks like Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer is going to hold up Israel Bruce there just a little bit. And Louis Ballard isn't having any of it. He pushes Wheat Farmer a bit wide there saying, no, no, that's my line. Uh, you give room to me. And Ballard's going to get held up just a bit there by John Jefferson, but he's going to make his way around. As uh, Clay Gibson's been hanging with him just a bit. Gibson was able to pick up the pace following Ballard's line, so uh, Ballard and Gibson are starting to close the gap just a little bit to uh, Israel Bruce. As uh, James Hewitt's going to be the first car to hit the pit lane on lap 16. This might be just a bit early. A lot of cars have been able to push at 17 or 18 laps, but Hewitt's really been digging. So that must mean that he's burned off fuel quite a bit faster than some of the other cars. Looks like Joe Craig is going to be in the way of Louis Ballard here. Oh, they make contact, and they're going to go into the wall. Louis Ballard's going to spin from second place, but he's going to get that right. He's not going to lose much time. And, oh uh, boy... That was uh, just wrong place, wrong time for Joe Craig. Uh, I'm sure Louis Ballard is not thrilled with him at all. And uh, Ballard's going to bring his car into the pits this time anyways. It's lap 17, so nearing uh, that pit window. So uh, going to get that damage repaired as well, too. That's quite a bit of left side damage on that 8 car. Uh, that's going to hamper him a bit in the speed trap, but... Looks like Israel Bruce is going to bring it into the pits on lap 18, about when we expected the leaders to come in. Uh, most of the cars are going to follow him in. There's uh, Clay Gibson. However, Corodovos is going to stay out, and it looks like uh, Lazareva is going to stay out too, and they're going to take over the lead. So Nicholas Corodovo is getting that lap lead, uh, that bonus point. He's doesn't team doesn't really need it, but uh, he's doing pretty well on the points this year as uh, Israel Bruce beats Ben Atkins out of the pits. Uh, looks like Clay Gibson had an awful pit stop as uh, Ben Atkins is going to close right up on the bumper of Israel Bruce coming out of the pits as Bruce has been pretty slow there. And Bergman's going to come up and start pushing Atkins uh, right on his bumper, right on Bruce's bumper. They're going to go too, too wide here. And it looks like Atkins is going to take the lead on the outside away from Israel Bruce or what looks like it might be the battle for the lead not sure how much uh, Cordovos and Lazareva are going to gain as Cordovos gets pushed wide there by Preston Bell but he's coming into the pits this lap lap 19 of 51 and uh, there he goes into the pits not going to deal with Preston Bell anymore as uh, looks like Juvenos come into the pits burn farts there Lazareva is going to follow uh, Cordovos in we're going to see where they cycle out if that really will be the battle for the lead as uh, Cordovo's changing the tires there. He's going to get out in front of Lazareva. And uh, I don't see Ben Atkins anywhere. So looks like that strategy of staying out longer is going to pay off. As Cordovo's has the lead coming out of the pits. And Ben Atkins is nowhere to be seen. We're going to try and find him here for you guys. And uh, okay, there he is. Uh, ben Atkins just a couple seconds, maybe a second or so behind Alina Lazareva. And uh, looks like he lost a few seconds to Cordovos in the uh, pit cycle. So, However, his tires are a bit warmer, so he should be able to run them down as they're going to be slower here for a few laps. As Gaspar de Souza's alternate strategy, he's up into 10th place. He just made a pass there as Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer gets turned by Ike Durbin, who's uh, had enough of him being in the way. And Gaspar de Souza is slicing and dicing through the field. He's got the warmest tires on track right now, but... Uh, he'll be coming into the pits here soon as he gets around John Jefferson there. I uh, don't think this strategy is going to work out for D'Souza. Uh, just the the amount of laps that they can run is not enough for him as Corridovos, uh, looks like we might have a battle for the lead here as Corridovos has been held up by some lap cars, specifically Dan Ferre, 
who seems to be a bit of a nuisance here today as Ben Atkins has gotten around Alina Lazareva for second place back there as he's got some speed in that five car. Uh, he pit one lap earlier, so that means that he's going to be faster throughout this run as Israel Bruce, fourth place now, has uh, just about caught Alina Lazareva too. So we've got four cars within two seconds of the leader. This is going to be a great battle for the lead if they can keep this up. As looks like Cordovo's up front is struggling to get around uh, Ben Worthington. And Bruce is going to get trapped here behind Burnfart Jr. Meanwhile, Cordovo's is stuck behind Worthington, who's going to slide up the track. Uh, Cordovo's going to look low. He's going to have to block low for Atkins, but Atkins is going to go even lower. Coming onto the front straightaway, too wide. Too wide for the lead, as looks like Atkins in the STS is going to have the aero advantage. Juno's not too aerodynamic. That's going to hurt them on that straightaway. Atkins is going to lead that lap going into turn one. Atkins has the advantage on the inside. Still too wide, though. Corridovo's hanging strong on that outside, but it finally looks like Atkins is going to win that battle and take the lead going through turn number three. And uh, Atkins pulls away just a little bit away from Nicholas Corridovo's. Here's James Hewitt running in fifth place. He He's come from... 12 seconds back after pit stops he is only five back now so james hewitt has the fastest car on track by quite a bit he's been gaining about a second to two seconds a lap on the leaders and uh, it looks like he's ready to enter the discussion for the lead as five cars now within five seconds of each other gaspar de souza his pit strategy is not going to work he comes into the pits on lap 23 of uh 51 and he is not going to be able to save enough fuel uh, to do this as a two stopper so he is going to make three stops this race and his pit strategy is not going to work as ben atkins has opened up a three second lead on nicholas corridovos who has not really been able to keep pace with atkins uh, the only car to be able to keep pace with him so far is james hewitt who sits in fifth place about four seconds back as uh, louis ballard if you're wondering where he went uh, he had quite a bit of damage on that left side of the car, and uh, he lost about 25 seconds in the pit, so he is in 7th place right now. Still a good run for Ballard, but not the win that he was hoping for, as he was the fastest car on track that first stint. Here's James Hewitt. You can look in front of him and see there's uh, Israel Bruce in the distance there. Uh, and the next lap... Uh, he's just about caught him, so you can tell just how fast that Hewitt's going. Uh, really catching the top uh, top four here. And he should be on top of uh, Israel Bruce within the next lap or so. But Ben Atkins has pulled about eight second lead on the rest of the field. So uh, Atkins is waving by to the field in his rearview mirror. As uh, Hewitt has caught Israel Bruce. This is lap 27 of 51. And uh, he's, he's struggling to get around Bruce. It seems like he's hit a brick wall. And uh, Bruce is going to do a good job of defending. Uh, next lap, he still hasn't gotten around him. He's going to try and take a peek here. Uh, coming into the hairpin. Looks like he might get alongside of him. But oh, coming into this Dwyer S, he can't really go too wide through that. And he knows it. That's his teammate in front of him. So he backs off and lets him have the position. But... Eventually, next lap, he's finally going to get a decent run here. Oh, almost gets the quarter panel there. But Hewitt on the outside is going to power around Bruce, going too wide with him there. And uh, he's going to take the position and set his sights on Alina Lazareva, who's struggling to get around Joe Craig, who uh, that car's handling has gone downhill since he backed it into the wall. Oh, might let's take a look here into the virus. They're going to they're gonna get together. Oh, no. That's the teammates getting together. Bruce and Hewitt are going to go out of the race, racing for the top five. Oh, no. Hewitt, what were you doing, lad? Looks like he tried to get a run on Lazareva, got into the quarter panel, just misjudged it, went sideways, and just came across Bruce's line through there. And, oh, that is, that is so unfortunate going on board with Bruce and oh man if if Bruce was just a couple car lengths back that never would have happened just wrong place wrong time and that is heartbreaking for team Ben Atkins who well Atkins is still in the lead he's pulled out quite a bit of a lead they're not going to gain nearly as many points as they were if all three cars were up on the top five so that is 
very disappointing for that team. They were having such a great run. Uh, speaking of great runs, here is Ingrid Hadeland, who is up in the top 10. She's up in sixth place. I haven't talked about her all day. Uh, but she is just ha she's having a great performance. Uh, wasn't in this car last week. This was Alexa Lake in the car. And she finished in the top 10. And it looks like it might be another top 10 for that car. Is uh, Ike Durbin talked about him early in the race. But he's in seventh place. Uh, just past halfway. Lap 31 of 51. And uh, he's really had a lonely race. He hasn't had anyone around him for the past 10 laps or so. So he's just uh, pacing himself right now. And Tom Delgado, guess where he is? Back in the top 10. Tom Delgado, the top 10 leader uh, for the series. I uh, believe he's got 9 or 10 top 10s in 16 races. Is uh, battling with Ramsey Cockner. He's going to take over 9th place here. Uh, just like that. So Tom Delgado in his most familiar environment, the lower top 10, uh, doing an excellent job here today. Uh, kind of disappointed to see if he doesn't get a ride in the Cup Series next year like he uh, thinks he will. Speaking of rides in the Cup Series next year, there's some rumors circulating around that this driver, Clay Gibson, might be in line for one. Uh, might be at Paloma Autosport, might be somewhere else. Uh, again, they're just rumors, but Clay Gibson has had one heck of a season in the Cup Series on the road courses that he's run. He, he, we haven't seen him on an oval yet, but we might by the end of the season. Speaking of next year as well, uh, Tom Wilson and Johnson Racing recently announced earlier this week that he has signed a multi-year deal to drive for the team until the end of 2018. So in a series where one-year deals are oh so common, it's really nice to see some uh, long-term deals come together, and Tom Wilson has rewarded their patience and diligence with him with a 13th place run, which is one of his better runs on the road courses this year. He just got around Scott Wollen for that position. Battle we haven't really talked about all that much this season is the Rookie of the Year battle, and right now it's a three-way race between Mark Burt, H.J. Wheat Farmer, and Sapphire Anderson, and Anderson is running the best of the three right now. Uh, she's up in 11th place, doing an excellent job in the V-Car. Uh, Mark Burt's been uh, about 21st, 22nd for most of the race, and Wheat Farmer's been nowhere, so this battle might close up just a little bit after this race, but Anderson having a great run, and so is her teammate, uh, Josh Marshall, who's in 12th place right behind her. Uh, Marshall got his first top 10 at Sweden, so he's proven that he can do well on the road courses, and uh, he's almost up in the top 10 once again here today. Their third teammate, Lewis Jones, is in 20th place, so three top 20s for Australian motorsports. That's not a bad showing by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, doing really well here today. As, as we went by there, you saw Louis Ballard and uh, Ramsey Cockner in the pits. They came in on lap 34, so... Uh, 16, 17 laps to stretch the finish. That's not out of the realm of imagination. I think they should be able to make it to the end of the race on this final stop here. As uh, Ben Atkins now getting right to lap 24th place. That's Duncan Cobb going a lap down. He's opened up quite a big lead. That's an 8 second lead that he's got. And uh, Greg Woodard right in front of him. That's 23rd. And you'll see Ramsey Cockner right in front of uh, Greg Woodard after his uh, pit stop there as Nicholas Cordova is going to bring his car into the pits. He's not going to stay out as long as he did last time, so an interesting call from the 39 team. Ben Atkins opting to stretch his fuel just a bit as uh, he's had enough of a gap to be able to do so as he's getting ready to put Greg Woodard a lap down. You saw Josh Marshall come out of the pits there, and so is Tom Delgado right in front of him. So uh, Atkins stretching it out as, oh, that's some contact between Dan Ferre and Clay Gibson as uh, Gibson brings his car into the pits next lap. And so will Ingrid Hadeland. And uh, also a couple other cars, including uh, Ike Durbin, who's been up in the top 10 as well, are going to come into the pits on lap 37. So Ben Atkins coming in uh, on lap 38. I don't think he's going to be the last one, though, as we're going to take a look here. Uh... Atkins is in, but Alina Lazareva is going to stay out. So Lazareva is uh, going to stretch it further than her teammate Corridovos, and she's going to take the lead and get a lap led. And uh, she's not had a great season thus far, but uh, 
runs like this are definitely going to turn that around as she's up in the lead right now getting ready to put Tom Delgado a lap down as her teammate unfortunately has a tire going down that's Brian Gallagher in the uh, Pokemon black car pulls that car off to the side he was running in seventh place so a great run for Gallagher hadn't talked about him all day uh, but uh, this run is not going to be exactly what he was hoping for he'll limp it back to the pits but he'll get back going as Lazareva, the next lap, is going to bring her car into the pits. Uh, she's really had a miserable year and uh, had a couple bright spots. She had a great finish at Road Atlanta. Uh, she's had a couple great finishes on some of the road courses recently, but aside from that, she hasn't really been doing so well. As Atkins goes by, Lazareva has come out of the pits, so she will be closer than uh, she was last time uh, under the last pit cycle. So. Atkins might have a little bit more pressure under him, but uh, he, sh he still should have the lead by a few seconds as Gaspar de Souza brings it in for his third pit stop uh, on lap 38, so he was not able to stretch it nearly as far as he was hoping. He was up in seventh place when he pit, though, so at least he was able to get that far. Mark Burt has a tire going down on the 566 car, so he's going to pull that to the apron and into the pits. He was running in 21st place, but he's quietly put together a very strong season. He's up in the top 10 in points coming into this race, uh, leading the rookie of the year by about th by three points over Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer. Uh, hopefully, he'll be able to rebound and uh, keep that lead over both him and Sapphire Anderson. As Ingrid Hadeland and Dan Foray are going too wide. Oh, they make contact. Uh, looks like Hadeland's going to lose the car. She's going to hit the wall and the tires there. That is, uh, that's a lot of damage on that 20 car, and she was up in the top five, too, as Dan Foray, just no spatial awareness, gave her no room, and uh, I think the officials might want to speak with Dan Foray after that one, because that, quite frankly, was ridiculous. As uh, Ingrid Hadeland, she will limp her way back to the pits, and she will finish the race, but uh, nowhere near the state of, uh, nowhere near the position that she was hoping or the state of her car that she was hoping. As Atkins now putting uh, Alex Phillips a lap down, he's in 18th place, having a pretty strong run here. Uh, not really known for his road course prowess, but he's doing a decent run, but Ben Atkins is just setting a torrid pace uh, up at the front of the field. As uh, we've got Andy Lambert having a pretty good run, he just got around Ben Worthington there, he put him a lap down, but uh, Lambert has quietly picked his way through the field. He's in 13th place right now, running right behind his teammate Franz Bergman, who is the best running of the uh, ROG Motorsports cars. Frank azaretto has been about 25th all race. But Lambert having a great showing here in Cariola. Didn't really expect this from him. Thought he was going to be more of a 20th place driver, but attrition has worked in his favor. Uh, same thing with Ian Elias, who's been quietly up near the top 10 all day. He's currently in 7th place, and he's 7th place in points coming into this race, so... Ian Elias, haven't really talked about him all season. He's kind of been laying low like a stealth bomber, and, uh... He'll, he'll show up at the end of the race in a great position, and you'll find yourself wondering where he came from, but... Ian Elias, uh, we noticed him this time, so... 7th uh, place, he's having a pretty great run. Uh, and quietly making a nice top 10 run in the championship too while he's been uh, at that oh that that great run for Alex Phillips is going to go down the drain unfortunately his car breaks down on him uh, right after the hairpin and he's going to get a tow back to the pits from 18th place that's a tough break he was having such a good run and here's Clay Gibson having a great run in uh, fourth place oh we've got some contact up ahead and he's going to slow down but that oh no he ran into uh that, that was Ryan Matthews. Uh, he's got quite a bit of damage on that 52 car. He's going to have to pit for that. Woodard's done. What happened? Going to take a look here. And it uh, looks like that's the battle for 19th between Gifu and Cobb. Uh, Matthews. Oh, that's some contact between Gifu and Matthews. They're going to go hard into the wall. Matthews is going to slide across the track and hit Woodard there. That's going to be the end of their days. Gifu would continue on. Uh think he'd need a pit stop for that and uh Alina Lazareva running right behind uh Brian Gallagher and oh Gallagher swings a bit wide and she just dumps him where have we seen that before um 
might be a little bit of a payback from Sweden when uh, Gallagher washed across uh, Lazareva. Hmm. Might be a bit of payback there. Is here's Franz Bergman. He was running in 11th place, but unfortunately, he's not going to be able to make it the rest of the way on fuel, and he'll have to come in with just a lap to go. As uh, 11th place, uh, there's Ben Atkins taking the white flag. He was so close to making his pit strategy work, but unfortunately, Franz Bergman has to come into the pits. But Ben Atkins, what a run here today! Just an excellent performance from this five car coming through the last few turns here. Started up in the top 10, fell back a little bit early on, but managed to make up all that ground on pit strategy. And uh, Ben Atkins coming through the final turn here. Teammates crashed out, but carrying the banner for his own team. Ben Atkins is going to take his second win of the season, third career win here at the Cariala Raceway. Alina Lazareva brought the car home in second place, 3.6 seconds behind Ben Atkins. Great showing for her. Same thing with Nicholas Corridovos in P3. He uh, got another podium on one of these road courses. Louis Ballard, P4, managed to recover from that spin early on. And he finished right in front of uh, championship leader and teammate Ike Durbin. Ramsey Cockner didn't talk about him all day. P6, great showing for that uh, nice cock racing team. Tom Delgado up in the top 10 once again. Uh, Josh Marshall, P9, has a great run, second top 10 of the season, and Tom Wilson was the last car on the lead lap. Only 10 cars on the lead lap at the end. Andy Lambert, P11, great run for him. Clay Gibson, P12, uh, had some issues with uh, that right front quarter panel that set him back. Uh, Scott Wollen, P13. Sapphire Anderson, best finishing rookie. Gaspar D'Souza's pit strategy did not work, but it still got him a top 15. Brian Gallagher, uh, finished p16 after getting spun by his teammate lazareva bergman's pit strategy got him a 17th place and akio gifu after uh, getting in that incident with uh, ryan matthews uh, finished in 20th place now looking at the points ike durbin has opened up a 46 point lead now over tom delgado who moves up to second place ben atkins just three points back from delgado sits third just to think after talladega he was last in points Ian Elias up to fourth place, quietly moves ahead of James Hewitt, who dropped down to fifth place. Uh, Gaspar D'Souza, P6, having a pretty good year. Same thing with Louis Ballard in P7, the worst of the Manicor engineering cars. Mark Burt, P8, having a st great season still after uh, having his issues today. Sapphire Anderson, P9, just two points behind him. And Brian Gallagher rounds out the top 10. Nikos Korodovos tied with him for 10th place, sitting on 11th right now. Duncan Cobb, P12, uh, 19 points behind P11. Josh Marshall, P13 after that great run. H.J. Wheat Farmer uh, really has free fall through the standings. Uh, P14 for him, tied with Barbara Burt, who had a pretty poor run today. Andy Lambert, P16, had a great run here today. Same thing with Tom Wilson in P17. Ramsey Cockner makes an appearance in the top 20 in 18th place. Akio Gifu P19 and Kurt Pliskin rounds out the top 20 for Accelerator Motorsports. Finally, taking a look at the team standings, Griffith Motorsports jumped over Double B Motorsports for 4th, and ROG Motorsports passed Matthews Motorsports team for 10th, and those were the only two team changes. However, Accelerator Motorsports and Stefan's Racing continue to fall behind the top 12 teams. Lucas Motorsports sits only 26 points from safety behind Matthews Motorsports team.